Mr. Griff, he don't know how to bury a bone. He uses his nose. <laughs> Every morning, same old drill. He's got to come out to the shop. It's snowing again this morning. It snowed yesterday, then melted. It's snowing again. Oh, lovely day. Okay, so here's my rear harness. And I've just kind of wedged the end in the vise. I didn't clamp it down. I didn't want to break it. And I've just kind of taped it every foot. And then there's my dome lamp extension and my gas gauge wire. They have to come out of that loom somewhere in there. So I've taped it back to here. And I'm just going to leave all that loose. So I'm going to fish this from the trunk forward in there so when you cut your tape just use like a sharp knife but don't cut your finger <laughs> I like to cut it I don't like to tear the tape because when you tear it it leaves a lumpy a lumpy deal and then when you tape it up it looks bad so I need to go get some speaker wire to go with this too uh I'll have to ask the stereo guy if I can run those speaker wires in with this or I need to separate them. Uh, don't know if that would cause any electrical interference, buzzing in the speakers or not. But anyway, that's quite a chunk of wire. So uh, it's going to be hard to fish around in there if you don't tape it up every foot or so. So... This should be easy. This should be quite simple, straightforward. I'll just fish it in the back, through the trunk, and up inside here. Uh, it's going to come through that hole right there. There's the dome light wire fished through there, so that pigtail will plug in there. And then this other end, there's the pigtail for it. It's going to plug in there. I got my dash in there uh, just to check and see if there's going to be inter any interference with the wiring. It looks like I'm going to be good. So it'll come out again. Uh, I'm going to have to tape the wires that go over to the gauges because they're laying up against the steering column support. And I don't want to see them get worn into that and get a short. So... Onward we go. Okay, I got the tail light loom installed today. Uh, I've got the wire here for the overhead light inside. Um, there's a pigtail that hooks it to this. I don't know why they did this, but they put this kind of connector in there versus the OEM one like that. So I either got to cut this one off and put one to fit this. It'd probably be easier just to cut this one off. Anyway, so they give you everything you need to do from a 70 to 74 in the Challenger or the Cuda. And so here's the 70 and 71 Challenger. And as you can see, it takes six lamps, whereas mine only takes four. And then the kudas only take four. Anyway, they give you all these uh, special ones. The kudas use a different type of connector, different style plug-in, especially these right here. And you can see them on the drawing right there. So you get everything you need to do this. And then I have run the wire uh, from back up in there in the trunk and around and along here and then it, here's the plug-in right here problem is I I didn't mark my holes where my dimmer switch went now I can't find them <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to find my holes there's no way to get under here to find them because that's not open okay I am done done with the trunk portion of the wiring uh, what I did with my dome light is I cut the factory end off. This was a brand new harness I'd bought that had the factory ends on it. 
so I had to cut it off and use American Auto Wire connectors for that. I've got that done. I've gotten my new fuel gauge wire installed. I got the connector here. Let's see, this is my license plate light. Uh, this was simple because I didn't have to wire in the marker lights on the side because I don't have any. They've been shaved off. So I hooked my grounds here to these studs which hold these metal deals on. I took my uh, continuity tester, test meter, and tested them and that's actually a good ground so <clears throat> all you have to do is take some I think those are 1024 threads and that one didn't have the special nut on it like the rest of them so I used two of them in the washers to ground that so that's the ground for my lights so that's done so time to move on, either start in the engine bay and start working on that or start working on the interior. It's time to flip a coin. So haven't got a lot done on the Challenger today. I've been uh, helping the boys. Uh, get their output shaft together and then just got back from hauling a 1200 pounder up to the butcher we've been waiting since October to get to be in line to get a cow butchered October can you believe that butchers are that busy oh so anyway I got these wires in there I used a uh, 14 gauge on these and I tested it with a battery and the doors pop open really good. Um, it had these spring loaded poppers on here and they, uh, I took them out because they're too long and the end of this goes in there and the rubber on the rear window catches on this and tries to push it up out of the track so the door pops open good without these so I got to figure out what to do to plug these holes I did get my new uh, little plastic deals for my dash these deals they go in where the light is the light tube comes up and then they come clear up here to where your right and left turn signals and your brake light are so i got those and i've got the gauge bezel on and then these deals are the lights uh that illuminate the gauges they don't really illuminate them a bunch but it does work so Anyway, I had to pull the dash back out to do all that, <clears throat> and uh, I've got to drill a hole. It's got a hole right here in the door with a little rubber grommet, and I've got a little kit with those, but I'm going to have to think drill a hole right here, and then I'll bring my wire in down here where that loom goes and along the floor, so... That's all I got done today. Well, winter's back a little bit. Wonder how much snow we'll get. I really need to go work on my snowmobiles and go snowmobiling. But I want that car out of the shop. I want that done. So I'm sticking to the car. Okay, so I'm making all the mistakes again so you don't have to. So, for some reason I thought there was a a rubber bushing in here already but then after I ran it through the door I'm like oh there's no bushing in there 
And I think what he did, if I remember right, is he ran it along the door sill and then back here and out and down in, which wasn't good. So I had to completely uncoil both my rolls of wire and fish them through there and then run them back. Okay, so I had to pull it clear back out again because I forgot that I'd bought a bunch of this loom stuff and it's not split. So I put that on and then I put some shrink wrap on and shrunk it and uh, it's purple, sort of purple, not dark enough. <laughs> In the camera it looks really like pink, but it's not. It is actually dark purple. So anyway, okay, I think I finally have that whipped. Okay, so again, I'm making all the mistakes so you don't have to. So when you're using this stuff, sizing is everything. So you go get the piece, the smallest piece that you don't think any, there's any way in the world you're going to shove those wires in. But when you, when you push on this stuff from this end... See how big it gets, and it just moves on there. But if you try to pull it, it'll get tighter than tight. And if you get too big of loom, you can't get it tight. So go with the absolute smallest piece you can get. And then, so the other reason I decided to take it out was running it just from that hole to that hole doesn't work. So what I've decided I'm going to do is it's going to have to loop because if it loops and I tried it, it doesn't bend near as much. Uh, if you go short, it really bends it on the very ends of it. Well, that rhymed. Bends it on the ends of it. Anyway, <laughs> I can't even talk. So I, I'll come back when I get this shoved on there. Okay, I think this is the fourth time. Fourth time's a charm. So I've got it in there, looped around. Boy, that sure looks pink in the camera, but to the naked eye it ain't. Anyway, that allows that to not kink so heavily. Anyway, that should work. Okay, I got my wires fished to the back here. Got me lots of length. So I'm gonna put the battery over in this side, I think. And then I will fuse off of the battery uh, and run a hot one over to here and uh, back over. Anyway, that should work. And then this one's just a ground, so that'll get hooked to the ground side on the battery. Uh, so if I... If I remove this secret door opener button here when I'm done, the only way I'm going to get in there is to open the trunk every time and push the button until I get the remote hooked up. And the remote, I'll probably mount the box somewhere in here. It's got kind of a little wiry antenna deal. I don't know what you're supposed to do with that, but... Like I said before, I have no idea how to wire it up because the instructions aren't in the box. So you got to find the company and see if I can get the instructions on how to wire that remote up. I only have a door popper on this side. I don't have one for the passenger's side. Um, there was only one solenoid in it, but there was two key fobs and all the other stuff to do two of them i don't know what happened to the other one uh anyway since those door poppers weren't going to work and they interfered with my window i just went and got a couple of stainless plugs to plug the hole and then i'll take the stainless screws put back in here or paint some purple and screw them in i think purple would, purple would look good wouldn't it Okay, I want to show you the pain and suffering old Jess gone through. So this is the shaft that goes into the hydraulic brake booster here. And uh, what I've done is this is my master. And it comes with this extension deal in there in case your rod's too short. 
Anyway, I kind of like this one because of the blunt end on it. And it's kind of like designed to fit in that aluminum piston. Versus, I've got a longer shaft like this that I could take that out and put it in there. But what you have to do is you have to cut this off. And I can't tell you how many times I've been over to the grinder. You chuck it up in the electric drill and rotate it. You got to put this taper on till it fits down inside of here. And I try to get it that size so the flat end goes down in the flat bore. And then what I have to do is I have to stick it inside the booster. And I've got the little guide thing sort of in there to hold me. I've got the spring and the retainer out right now. So you got to make sure you get it in the piston there. Then you take the master, put it up here, carefully insert it. Make sure you get it in the end there where it goes. And it doesn't seem to be going. There we go. Bingo. So you can see how much gap I've got there. So I got to do some more grinding on that. Now here's the hard part. You got to get you got to get down to where this will go flush and then you got like 5000s clearance between the end of this and the shaft which is pretty darn tough to do. Fun to do. See, I keep worrying that I hit that and it comes out of the coming out of the piston here, but we're in. Can you tell me when I'm in? There we go. Okay. So what do I got there? Probably three sixteenths, maybe a quarter. I still gotta take off of that. So I pull it out. Pull this back out. And what I'll do is go put it in the grinder. And I'll grind down to here. What I really should do is put the calipers between that, get some kind of idea and make a mark, and then grind down to that and then retaper it. So let's go to the grinder. Okay, let's go try it again. Yeah, we're still quite a ways. Quite a ways. I'm going to go get the calipers and see if I can measure that. Okay, <clears throat> ground some more off. It's hot. Burn your fingers. I'm going to see if I can burn mine. Okay, we'll see if that stupid no good GoPro actually works. You know, I've never had one of these, but I'm not real impressed with them. Not real impressed. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. We're right down there. We've got much to come off now. So this is the part where it gets time consuming because it's like short of going and getting some uh feeder gauges and trying to get an idea how much i gotta come off and then measuring the length with the calipers as i grind it off yeah so i don't know maybe i can just do it with a file i might be able to just yeah i think i will just do it with a file I'm gonna do her by hand i'm gonna give her a hand job I'm down to the point now where if that thing was to come out of the booster, I'd know it. So, we're getting closer. Probably another 20 thousandths. I don't really want to file that all off by hand, but I don't see that I have a choice. If I go to the grinder, I'm going to overdo it. I just know I am. So, file some more here. So this is what I got to do. I got to put it in this and make sure that we're still down against the flat. And we are. We're not touching the taper. I got a pretty good taper. So if it gets to the point where 
Uh, I can feel it touching the taper. I'll have to go put it in the drill and grind it some more. So this is where this goes, is down in here, like that. I just like this better. It's a nice billet piece, and then that piece I'm grinding on can go in here and hit flat on that. Down in this bore, it's kind of tapered, and I don't know, I just don't like the idea of that rod pushing into the aluminum. I don't know, I could be wrong. Oh, looky there, look at that. So I am down to where I don't have a lot left. I got to take off of that. It's just a little wobbly. So actually, they want you to have five thousandths. That's like, geez, that's hard to guess on. Oh, sweet. That's down. That's like, I don't know if I got any clearance or not. So what I'm going to do is I go get a magic marker. I'll paint the end of this, put it in there, wiggle it around, see if it makes a mark. Okay, so this is what I did. I just put some black marker on there. I went and looked. I thought I had some bluing dye, but... I don't. I don't know why. I used to. Okay. There. Okay, what am I going to do? Move it. You probably can't see it, but I see a mark there, one over there where it's just barely touching. So I'm just going to put it together that way. They want you to have 5,000 clearance because if you were actually depressing the piston in the master cylinder, your brakes might hang up, not come off like they should. So I pushed on that. I don't know if that pushed the master in at all or the booster. No, I don't know. I'm going to say, yeah, I think that's, I think we're good there. Yeah, baby. Yeah. So done. Got one little mark there. So that's perfect. I'm glad that's finally finished. So now I got this screwdriver here in it. That's holding this one nut in here. This one on this side will come out. It's kind of a pain to hook it up, but I've got to reassemble this stuff. And this is the guide. Anyway, that goes in there and there's a groove. And to get this thing out, it's a kind of a bugger. You kind of have to take and push this in, cock it, and then pull it out. And then to get this rod out, you just put a pair of vice grips on the end and jerk it out. And basically what it does is I think it pulls it out of this white plastic washer right here. And the spring and the retainer hold it in. It, you'll get some spring resistance before it pops loose. And then once you get this out, you get that retainer out. Kind of hold a stuff a rag in here um, to keep this from flying out and losing it. So to put it back in, I think what I have to do is I have to put this on here, I think. See if I can get it. Wow, I don't know how they do that. Hope you don't have to put a hammer on it and bash it in there. I don't want to do that. There we go. There we go. There. Snaps in there pretty good. 
and put this on and put this on and shove this back in there all the while getting it in the piston hole back there I don't know how you know whether you're in it or not well I don't want to move there we go woohoo I think, I think, I think, I think. No? What the heck? Come on, man. Come on, man. It's probably getting boring for you, ain't it? It's getting boring for me. There it is. So it's got to go in that groove right there. Right in there. Anyway, that holds this in there. And we'll check the cylinder on it one more time. See what we got here. Bingo. We're there. Probably have a little teeny bit of clearance, and that's enough. As long as it doesn't depress that cylinder we're good piston okay we're mounted in and i just mounted up the stock brake lines to it i haven't put the proportioning valve on uh it has one factory one down right there but for right now i just want to get this done that's something i can put on later let me show you the valve so this is the proportioning valve and it bolts to the bottom of the master cylinder like that and these two lines come out of the master that's your rear brake line there and that's your front one out so anyway i'd love to install this but in order to do that right now um the brake lines would have to come out and I'm going to have to make all new brake lines because they really need to be one piece and come up to the valve. Now, since I'm not an expert at brake plumbing, I'll have to call my friend Mike Weimer in Wiscason and uh, see what he has to say. So you've got to join your front brakes the two lines together they got to go in one hole and then your rear brakes are just one line out which that'd be a piece of cake but it's the front ones you're gonna have to have a t-block or something and eh, i don't know how to do this um and it's going to be tricky because that proportioning valve bolts under here and so it's going to be tight trying to get in there. This is something that really should have been done while the engine was out. Because then it would have been a piece of cake to get everything bent and get it in there where it needs to be. One of the reasons I bought the proportioning valve was I figured with this booster, you can get up to, I think, like 26, 2700 line pressure on these lines and I don't know if these old lines would handle that so kind of wanted I thought you know it'd be a good idea to replace them but we'll just get it hooked up I'll get the brakes bled when I get ready to get going and uh, hopefully we won't explode a brake line somewhere <laughs> oh winter came back last night with a vengeance so I got some stuff going out in the cat box. Get out the magnet and see if it'll stick this morning. And it does. Put up the red flag. Oh, here we go. Mr. Griffey's waiting to go with me. He ain't letting me out of the house this morning. He loves the snow. Just absolutely loves it. Okay, got a couple of boxes going to some good friends in Kula, Hawaii, and uh, 
I'm sending these priority three day mail, Russell and Mindy. So let me know if they actually show up in three days. Uh, it is Monday, February 21st this morning. I uh, got a box going to Steve Swallows uh, in Deland, Florida. Uh, got one going to Anthony Nielsen. I don't know where you're from, Anthony, because I think you were in Canada. Because these all go to this central processing place in L.A. before they leave the country. Got a shirt going to Ben Clark in Platte City, Missouri. And I got this one going to Eoin O'Donnell. He's in Ireland. And it came back. This I shipped this out originally before Christmas, like December 12th or 13th. And it's taken that long to come back. But some dingling at the Ireland post office didn't like my harmonization code. There's like a 145 pages of harmonization codes specifically for like clothing or hats and stuff like that. Anyway, it's a real hassle to figure out what code you use. So I'm sending it back, Mr. O'Donnell. Uh, I'm hoping it makes it there this time. It's going priority mail this time, so it should come quicker. So please let me know if you get it. I hope it doesn't come back. I It kind of ticked me off they did that. But anyway, <laughs> you guys have an awesome day. Well, it turned out to be a beautiful day. But uh, those aren't going anywhere today, so i got to bring them back in. Um, I forgot it's President's Day. Um, um, yeah, and, and I had hair on my legs. Yeah, <laughs> not that President. <laughs> So I'm working on my carpet. I had Matt stop down to Home Depot and get me some carpet scissors. Those things are awesome and they're sharp. So I want to thank Danny Toner for the box of Band-Aids. <laughs> I'm still using them, Danny. They come in real handy. Between that uh, razor knife and those carpet scissors, I have cut the crap out of myself. Anyway, I got underneath I poked up the holes I pre-drilled them for that ring that holds the shift boot down but I gotta have some help somebody to hold the carpet down while I poke up through the carpet to hold that all still while I try to get it over here and and then I can trim the edges of this okay, when you ain't got any help and you need to poke that hole up through the carpet from underneath what you do is you go get the boys nice clean Allison transmission gears <laughs> and you set them on here so that you it doesn't lift the carpet See I'm I'm a smart guy Okay, a lot of prodding and poking. I finally got the holes found and got some screws in it I don't have to put the boot on. I just needed that ring to go down to push that carpet down so that I can get it in down here and trim it off over here, but you know what I'd really like is a whole bunch of like, I don't know, 20 pound bags of lead shot. Something I could put in here to hold this. I got some clamps that I can clamp it over here, but trying to get all the wrinkles out and get it to fit. Fun job. Anyway, I'm learning how to install carpet. You want me to come put carpet in your car? Yeah, no thanks. You don't want me. Okay, I got those bolts in. This is my poking hole. So I stick a screwdriver through there, find the hole, heat this up, and then just take it, pull the screwdriver out, go poof through it, and it seals the hole up so it can't rip, tear, or otherwise. Anyway, ooh, I'm just getting so excited. This is just moving right along. I'm just waiting for when I screw something up. Okay, at 120, the lines seem to go away in this video from these LED lights. So apparently, I got to do 120 frames per second. What you looking for, Mr. Griff? Did you find a bone? Did you find one? Here, go get that one. That's our ritual. Come out every day with a pocket full of milk bones, and he hides them either in the shop or outside. So I've been working on the car carpet yesterday 
and I got all the bolts or holes burned through and bolts put in there. I got the driver's side trimmed around here and the seal plate on and the old back panel and then the side uh, kick panel in there so I could get it all to lay down. So I've got a little trimming to do around the steering column and for the accelerator pedal and then the drain holes in the firewall for the AC heater. And a little more trimming over there. I'll get the seal plate and the rear panel in, make sure it fits. Then I need to get me a steamer or something and steam this and get it to lay flat. But, hey, I got a package over here that my friend from New Zealand sends me every year. And it's a Australian calendar. I mean, New Zealand. Sorry about that, Thomas. I didn't mean to say Australian. It's a Kiwi calendar, mate. I, anyway, let's open that up and have a look-see. So the Postal Service, Thomas, they always seem to muck these up. I'm going to have to see if I can get this pushed through. Yeah, they got it out of here. I'm going to have to put the camera down and fix all this. But anyway, Thomas every year sends me a really nice calendar. I need to reciprocate, Thomas. Send you one of mine. It'll probably take six months to get to you. Had one come back from Ireland because I didn't have my harmonization code correct. Ooh, logger truck. Sam Nyber uh, on his channel. He's from New Zealand. He does logging. He always has lots of videos and pictures of logger trucks. Ooh, there's your Kenworth. It's got a big old forky on it. Forky. Forklift. That's not what I, you're thinking I said something else. I said Forky. Sheep truck. Some kind of livestock, not cattle. That doesn't look like cattle. That's, uh, what is that? Dumpsters or transfer trailer? I don't know. Griffies. That's his thing. You ready to go, Jeff? I want to go outside. Well, that's a cool looking day cab. Thomas, why, why are you guys driving on the right hand side and then driving on the left side of the road? I don't understand that. Somebody explain that to me. <laughs> that's a pretty picture. Prime range. Fresh. Daff, D-A-F. Are you daff, mate? <laughs> anyway, that's cool. I'll hang that on the wall, Thomas. Thomas comes through every year, sends me a large calendar. That is neat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the house. I'm gonna box one up for you, Thomas. Thank you. You got your bone? Okay. You gonna go out here and bury it? Where are you going with that bone, Haas? And take it clear back home? He loves the snow. And it's a bright, sunshiny day. It's awesome. You gotta find just the right spot to poop and pee and bury stuff. What are you thinking? Are you thinking about it? Not sure where to go with this one? Maybe I'll just eat it. Oh, we're digging. I'm going to stuff it in there with our nose and then try to bury it with our nose. And I can't get it in there, Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Griff. Somebody's got to teach you how to use your paws to bury stuff. <laughs> he just gets a filthy snoot. <laughs> And remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Beep, beep.